uh, let's start. Hi. So, good morning and good evening for everyone. Today, we will start a discussion. It could be a lecture session from Mrs. Sulini Aredinisi. So, before we start, um, we are pleased for you to start with pray first, and then we're going to start a presentation from Prof. Evi. So, before we start, let's pray together in one. Pray begin. Okay, finish. So now we are going to start this event by presentation from Mrs. Professor Dr. Evie Cartini. So from Professor Dr. Evie Cartini, the time is yours. Okay, uh, good morning everybody. Good evening or maybe good afternoon because we came from, uh, I think uh, from various country. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank to uh, Mrs. Uh, Yulini Aredininsi, yes. The first time I, I meet you uh, directly. Uh, so uh, it is a great pleasure for us to have you here, yes, uh, in <clears throat> our lectures and where I uh, lecture sessions. Yes, that's, uh, this will be not, not the, the first, but be, will be uh, another session, uh, Ms. Yulini. Uh, next time we uh, will invite you again for another occasion. So uh, why this is very important. Uh, well, I will uh, inform you about the NBRI, uh, what is the purpose, the goal, and then why uh, we need to make uh, this kind of the uh, platform. Can you see, Sinta? Sin? Yes, right. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, yeah, today is the lecture session. Maybe this is the first uh, we uh, pro provide the lectures. And then, uh, of course, who will give the, uh, deliver the lecture should be uh, an expert. Then I believe that, uh, uh, Mrs. Yulini Aredininsi is uh, uh, one of them. Yes, that's, uh, so we are glad to have you and then to share the knowledge, uh, the experience uh, you, uh, in Canada and also uh, about the lithium itself. Yes, uh, of course, we expect also you to share about the progress of the research uh, in lithium battery in, in Canada too. Yeah, so this is the... Uh, our quotation is powering Indonesia battery revolution. Yes, uh, as you have seen before, uh, the idea of the battery uh, national battery research institute is the uh, to gather all the stakeholders. Yes, uh, if you see here, the we, we should work with the academician. Yes, with the university, with the research institute, because all the innovation will come from from this research. Yes, so. Uh, and Bear Eyes is like a part platform, yeah, to gather this, uh, we know the facility, the basic science, and we give information. So we hope that the, it will give impact to the society, to industrial, yes, uh, to standardization. Therefore, we have to learn from many other countries, <coughs> many experts, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> And, uh, and also uh, to make this work, we need also the support from the government, yes? And also for the investor for funding. Uh, so we think that also we have the uh, government support from the Ministry of Research and uh, Technology. Uh, Professor Bambang uh, already uh, launched this NBRI and uh, he really appreciated the, this uh, existence, yes? And the others, uh, we, we, uh, we need also to drive, to endorse, to make that uh, the manufacture of battery in Indonesia to, to be realized. Yes. So this is uh, one of our duty, how to make this uh, and manufacture technology, what, they, what the problem in technology and then from industry, and then we can uh, try to, to link, yeah, to, to, meet, uh, to bridge them. Yeah, of course, this is the uh, what we expect at the end of the goal. Yeah, 
So uh, this is our roadmap. Yeah, uh, actually the idea of uh, NBRI not suddenly. Yeah, not not this year. It's been uh, starting. Uh, start. It's already started since uh, 2012 when uh, we thought that about uh, we plan about the center of excellence. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, in 2019, uh, officially we launched during the conference of Material Research Society I, uh, in Bogor that you, you saw before. Yes, we launched this uh, National Battery Research Institute. Yeah. So actually, uh, uh, in this year, uh, I was the coordinator of the National Research Consortium. Yeah, uh, funded by the Ministry of Research, and then. Uh, during that meeting, we met the professor from uh, UK, and then uh, he, he he supported us. Yeah, uh, and then we apply to the grant from GCRF, and then give us approval uh, in this year, and to help establishing. Yeah, so uh, we need the support uh, budget, and then for uh, operational, and also for establishing the uh, uh, the NBRI. So 2020. We, we will have, we have actually the legal form of the NBRI, yes. So we expect that we become the center of excellence, not only in national, but also uh, become the international recognition, yeah. So we, we expect also we can be a center for the training education, especially for young scientists, yes. And then uh, give, uh, we'll be a partner for the government for certification, and hopefully we can work together with battery university that already exists in USA and then become the industry partner. Yeah. So, uh, so this is the roadmap. So uh, this is uh, our activity uh, before we met also the minister from Menko Maritim. Yeah. We, we discussed about the battery yeah, with, with them uh, and also with the president advisory board, uh, Professor Adi Ningsi. Uh, at the time, uh, we're really concerned about what happened uh, in Indonesia because we have the local resources, but not much. Yeah. Uh, so this is the launchings uh, last year with the rector of Mustopo and also the chairman of Batan. Yeah. And then uh, during that meeting, uh, we have several uh, MOU, yeah, LOI, uh, with the industry, with the university, with uh, private. Yeah. Uh, so this is with Professor Alan. Yeah. And then uh, we hold also the workshop, yeah, workshop uh, attended by uh, many participants, uh, even 55%, uh, they came from industry, yeah. This is very important to give the lecture, yeah. We invited also uh, the well-known scientists from Indonesia, like Professor Agus Purwanto, yeah, uh, Dr. Subhan and others, and also from abroad, yeah, from industry, uh, yeah, to share the knowledge, yeah, because this is uh, in India. No, you are not. And then I, our vision, uh, yeah, as you know, together, a stakeholder, and then the long term with the manufacturers, yeah. So this is all the uh, uh, MOU with Inalum, with uh, also Anu, and hopefully we'll make with Calgary, yeah, uh, Miss Adiningsi, yeah, uh, uh, Miss Yulini, and then uh, from here uh, we start the seat of the Ember Eye. So uh, Professor Alan here, and then we apply for GCRF, yeah, Global Challenges Fund. And why uh, we we use this, uh, the part of the institution is actually a kind of institution we benchmark, yeah. Uh, they have already far the institution, why not we, we follow, because it's, uh, they already uh, make a, a very uh, good result from the UK. So I, I wish that Indonesia can have this. Uh, we have the audiences also with the ministers, yes. Uh, and uh, so I, I would like to introduce this the, uh, the team, yes. Who uh, so Mr. Firman as the leader of the project of the uh, of the NBRI, uh, Sinta, uh, our secretary, yeah. Also international relation, and also this is uh, uh, Mr. Adit Triwigono is the finance uh, manager, yeah. So this is Prof. Alan uh, as the co-founder and myself as the founder. So this is the discussion. And then even uh, Prof. Bambang asked us to, to uh, you know, to put them together, even the consortium in Indonesia uh, and in the NBRI should be part of the national research priority. Uh, okay, this is the role. We, we need to have the uh, 
information, give you the information, the Indonesian scientists or, or the industry, the, the direct information from, from the source, yeah, from the expert, like what we do today. And then we want to have this certification. Yeah, we want to upgrade the focal, focal, uh, focal uh, students, uh, vocation to uh, upgrade so they have the experience uh, and then give the training and skill of course we can invite some lectures from abroad yes uh, so they they have the ability to to run and someday in indonesia we have the electric vehicle they they have to be distributed in all over indonesia not only in, in java yeah so we want to have to facilitate the company and then the students seeking of the job but they, they have the the good background yes I, when they are the member of uh, and where I um, maybe later on when after your lecture I, if I have time so uh, we will show the, also the one and bear a map yes so we have the map of uh, in the our website to find out uh, research facility in Indonesia the researcher uh, also the industry from upstream to downstream so we put them together yeah and all, all some information so this is in in our website yeah? uh, <clears throat> Uh, we have done uh, several FGD, yeah, a focus group discussion with several institution, industry. Yeah, this is in February uh, in Bandung in Ministry of Industry. Okay, so we visit also the land. We did also we uh, do the current issue. What is the current issue of the battery? Yeah, uh, and then uh, in 16 September, uh, our website was launched by. Uh, Professor Bambang, the minister. Yeah, we have the Indonesia, UK. So this time we have the Indonesia with uh, Canada. Yeah, if you are Indonesian, I believe this is the uh, you are represent the Canadian. So uh, I would like to have also that because this is the uh, we want to grow the young, brilliant scientists uh, from Indonesia. So uh, now we have the NMRI millennial teams now uh, join with us. Yes, we are proudly to introduce Cipta, Andika, they graduated from University of Indonesia, from ITB, from STTN, from UNPAR, and uh, Sinta uh, herself from uh, Mustopo. So uh, I hope that they can be uh, active, productive, innovative, creative, competitive, because this is international, excellent. And then we, we can uh, make them also uh, have the international relation. Yeah, some they continue to uh, abroad. So, and uh, we have this uh, lecture, millennial talk, uh, etc. Yeah, so, so this is what uh, we expect to have. Last time uh, we have even uh, several country attended this. Uh, I, I hope that uh, next uh, Sinta can uh, can uh, say or say how many uh, uh, participant from abroad. Yes, uh, in this meeting. Uh, at the end, uh, so uh, we will have the legal of the name, but uh, where is okay? So. Uh, the, this is become the Yayasan. Yayasan is the foundation of the center of excellent innovation of the battery and uh, renewable energy. So that is uh, all for me. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, now you can uh, start with the presentation and how uh, all the participants uh, enjoy uh, the lecture from uh, Ms. Yulini and then we are expecting to hear and about also about Canada. Time is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Abby, for such an amazing introductions and also presentations. So now we're going to start to a lecture session from Mrs. Yulini. But before that, I will introduce who is Mr. Yulini. Mrs. Sorry. So Mrs. Yulini Ari Nisi is a graduate from Master of Science in Geology and Geophysics, University of Calgary. Master of Science in Geothermal Geology of the University of Auckland, Diploma Geothermal Technology, Geothermal Institute, University of Auckland, and Bachelor Degree in Geology, Bandung Institute of Technology. Mrs. Yulini has a hard rock geology background with experience in geothermal industry, mining, and oil, sand explorations as geologists for more than eight years. Mrs. Yulini holds PGO provisional license from Africa, Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of Alberta. Mrs. Yulini is also enriched by more than six years experience in data analytics for asset engineering information management 
that she gained during the economic downturn in Canada. So, without waiting for long, Mrs. Cindy, the time is yours. Thank you, Cinta. Thank you, Professor Effie. Um, before I start, I'm really honored to be invited to speak in this lecture session. And okay, allow me to share my screen. Okay. Let me. Can you see? Um, can you see my screen now? Um, not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, Not that one, okay, hold on a second, yeah. Just give me a moment. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. OK. OK, can you see the note or just the slide presentation? Oh, well, we can see both. Oh, OK. OK, I think. Okay, something wrong here. <laughs> okay, I think I need to. Okay. Um, application. Okay, I think I want to show it with the uh, maybe you can go up here, slide so. Yeah, um, yes, slide so, and then yeah, click and from beginning. Oh. Okay. No, it doesn't work. Sorry. Oh, I think okay. I have to. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just stop sharing first. Uh, okay, I think this one. Yeah. Okay, should work now. Yes, Can you see it now? Yes, that's great. Yeah. So you can see it now? Yes, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. OK. But is that in the slideshow? Yeah, in the yeah. slideshow. Oh. OK. OK. OK, let me begin. Uh, so yeah, thank you for the introduction, Sinta. And also, thank you for the time that given to me. So how many minutes that I'm given time? It should be 40 minutes. What? Sorry? 40 minutes. 40 minutes, OK. OK, so um, this is just an overview of the lithium is as a new gasoline. Okay. I will tell you the details why it says uh, the new gasoline. And this is the outline of my presentation. So basically, I'm going to talk about oh, 
why the world need lithium now. And then I'm going to give you some facts about uh, just the facts of the scientific facts about lithium. And then also some interesting facts about lithium as a storage, energy storage. And then just a, a brief about metals for cathode in the lithium ion battery. And the main part is the how actually we can find the lithium in nature. And then also I will touch a little bit about lithium resource in Indonesia. And also I will talk about uh, lithium ion battery in Canada. And at the end, I will give you some takeaways. Okay. So um, everybody knows about the Paris Agreement, right? So Paris Agreement in 2015. Currently, it's been signed by almost 190 countries. So they agree to reach the zero emission in 2050. So that's basically the trigger of why lithium become hot commodity in the world, especially in the global uh, in in the global world. So basically, because they want to reduce the carbon emission through green energy. And lithium is the key component of the energy storage. And energy storage is really important needed for the vehicle, especially the electrical vehicle, and also for the renewable energy. Renewable energy that need the uh, energy storage include the wind power and also the solar panel. I will tell you the detail about it later in the next slide. And then lithium, is actually as a energy storage is make the renewable energy work at the most preferable, uh, so at the at the max capacity. So in this slide, basically show you how the lithium as an energy storage make the green energy work. So this is one example in South Australia. They have, there is like a complex of the wind power farm. And because of the assistance of the energy storage of the lithium ion battery there, which is, this is Tesla. Uh, as a, so it's about 100 megawatt installed in the wind farm. So that uh, battery, the giant, giant back battery complex, that makes the wind power generate electricity and it can be supplied 24 7 whether the wind blows or not so that's that's really important how the connection between green energy and the lithium battery and this is um the statement that i use here lithium is the new gasoline is basically from goldman Sachs research in 2015 uh, so they mentioned the the research mentioned that the the predict the lithium um, demand is it will be increased like three times within 15 years from so from excuse me Ms. Lini, so sorry for interrupt you but we only still see the outline uh, presentations we cannot see your next slide oh really yes we still see the outline only i'm so oh. sorry for interrupt okay i see how about now? Yes, we can see it. Okay, sorry about that. So this is the one I showed you about lithium, uh, lithium with the green green energy. Okay. Okay. Uh, you see the the chart now? Yes, we see it. Yes, we, we can okay. see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for that technical issue. Now it's okay now, right? Okay, so basically the chart showing that the demand of the lithium battery, uh, lithium is basically uh, reflected by the electric vehicle sales. So in, in 15 years, the, the, the sales is projected in increased three times. And the uh, Goldman Sachs research projected that the increase 1% of the electrical vehicle increase is gonna need 70,000 ton of the lithium, uh, lithium, in this case, it's lithium carbonate. 
And this is the part that we I want to bring you to the science 101. So basically, uh, what is uh, the lithium in uh, in science? It's basically part of the alkali metal group, and it is very soft, silvery metal, and very, it's the lightest of all metals. And then it has the, the least density, and it floats on the water. And then because of the very reactive, it can be found in any form in nature. So it, it can be found in brines, minerals, hard rock, and clays. Okay, so this is the interesting facts. I think most of you know that the, the lithium is not only in the battery, but actually needed for any kind of uh, material that is important for our life, even for the medicine. That's to control the, the what is that, the, uh, if you have like mental disorder, so that's basically the lithium carbonate is needed for the, to control the pressure, mental pressure, depression for, for a human. And we know that lithium is actually very important also in the battery. It's almost for almost 50% is needed. And even uh, more is needed for the electric vehicle and also for the uh, digital, trans, uh, digital product, digital technology product. And this is showing you how the rapid technology in battery from 2014 and it is projected to 2025, the lithium ion battery is gonna increase into like 70%, almost double from 2014. And this slide is just showing you uh, related with the geology because that's my, my background. But I feel this is really important, especially if I relate with the NBRI, NBRI, NBRI because it's not only for technology, but you also, we also need to think about uh, whether Indonesia have uh, the potential for the resource of the lithium. And we do have, I will talk about it in uh, the next section about the uh, potential of the resource, lithium resource in Indonesia. So basically this is just showing you what kind of minerals that contain that uh, uh, contain lithium. So basically there are three types of source, which is uh, lithium pegmatic intrusion. So we can find them mostly in Sumatra Island and then also sedimentary rock clay and uh, evaporate deposit, but we don't have that type in Indonesia. And then the, the last one is lithium brine, which is um, mostly as a water. So I will not discuss in detail about this one, but yeah, it's just for your information, but this is really important for, for geologists, but I, I'm sure you're going to be interested also to know. And this one is just the list of the minerals that I showed you before. So we can see there are several, several types of minerals that contain lithium that is quite significant, which is uh, they are mostly a silicate mineral, petalite, spodumen, and then lepidolite. Lepidolite is a mic mic uh, mica mineral. And this one, this is the slide just to show you about cathode in the lithium ion battery. Because lithium is actually only 7% is needed in the lithium ion battery. But there are other metals that are also important. There is, uh, the first one is the an as a anode uh, graphite. And then lithium ion is basically uh, needed for the electrolyte. And then the other element is the cathode that have uh, that consists of combination of different uh, formula depending on the type of the uh, lithium ion battery. Like for example, on the right side, you can see there is, there is a different type like NCA, LCO, LMO, and MCA. That's basically the formula with different combination of the cathode metals, like for example, cobalt, aluminum, or manganese, or nickel. But from here, we can see the nickel is really important because most of the uh, formula, a type of the uh, 
that thought there's needed, and uh, nickel is always there. And you can see this one, right? This is basically it's just uh, showing you the supply chain concern about for the lithium ion battery that happening now in the around the world. So we have a uh, kind of like a lack of uh, source, especially for the cobalt, because cobalt is mainly produced in the, the Republic uh, the Democratic of Congo. And then 65% of the cobalt production is coming from Congo. But the situation is like this, the, the, the countries that need, it, that need the, uh, to produce the lithium and battery, they are very selective choosing the countries who pro that produce the, that can supply the, the metals because they are very selective in terms of which country that very, uh, they use, they practice with the ethical, like for example, they, are, they care about environmental issue. So that, that's, that's actually the challenge that we have to try to tackle. So we try to, uh, if for example, Indonesia wanna be the, the producer of, the, of this lithium ion battery metals, uh, the, the metals of the component need to be, need to um, care about the labor, about the environment, so, so that uh, Indonesia can be the winner and then can be, can be selected as a supplier for those countries, especially uh, America and Europe. They're very selective on that uh, issue. And then another thing is graphite. As I mentioned before, graphite is, is needed for the anode. And China is the only uh, producer for graphite. While the other one is nickel, Indonesia is, has the highest uh, nickel uh, potential producer, uh, as we know. But the only challenge that we have because of the ban from the government about uh, exporting the raw uh, material, so basically that's making the, the price of the in the in the world market is becoming un, unstable. But possibly Indonesia is becoming uh, hold the control for the nickel nickel market. And then another one is for the nickel, uh, lithium itself, mainly um, produced in the countries in the South America because they, are, they have very big resource over there, like in Argentina, Chile, and Bolivia. So let me just continue the next one. The next slide is just showing how the uh, the price market of the of those metal, like for example, cobalt, nickel, graphite, and then also the lithium. You can see the cobalt price is really high because of the uh, because the source is only one, which is in the Congo. So that's why it's becoming so high. And this pie chart is ba basically show you the distribution of the lithium source around the world. So basically we have, as I mentioned before, there is a pack magnet, sedimentary rocks and the brine deposit. You can see the brine deposit here as the, is the, the bigger chunk of the source, lithium source. And this is a map showing you the distribution of the lithium uh, deposit around the world. As you can see, green represent the brine deposit, and then the, bra the brown color represent the pack market, which is uh, intrusion. And then the other one, the last one, the smaller chunk is the clay, sedimentary deposit. And so basically, uh, the reserve around the world is about 40 million tons, but currently it's only like even less than half, 50% has been produced, has been uh, mined from the, from the uh, resource that we have around the world. And I will not tell you, uh, I will not talk the details about it. This one is just basically showing you the type of the deposit, which is sedimentary rock, uh, where we can find the lithium. One example is found in Serbia. There is really um, quite big 
uh, reserve they have over there, 200 million ton, and then that's run by Rio Tinto, and it will be producing in 2023. And then this is just about the Pegmarit deposit. As I mentioned before, the main producer is from Australia. And this is just the details about the, the mine in Australia. I will not tell you, uh, I will not talk the details about it, but it's basically showing you, you this is the um, op, open pit mining operation. So you you understand that there, there is a, a big, big exposure on the environmental issue over there because it's open pit mining. And then this one is just showing you this, this schematic diagram about how they process, uh, especially in the mining operation for the lithium. So definitely the mining cost is high. And then also there is an exposure on the environmental uh, contamination because of the, uh, with the water contamination normally. And so this is the one that I want to focus on because, because this one, it has to do with the Indonesia resource, which is geothermal. So we have three types of the lithium brine deposit. It's basically continental, geothermal, then oil brine. And this is the continental brine that I mentioned before in South America as the main producer, which is uh, Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia. And currently they are the main supplier for uh, American market, which is uh, Tesla, uh, Tesla and also in China. And this is basically just showing you the geologic model, how the continental brine are formed. But I will not uh, tell the details about this one. It's basically just how, what is the favored condition that is uh, the the formation of the continental brand can be can be uh, can uh, happen yeah and so this was just showing you from the satellite uh, satellite pictures image that is the, to see the, the development of the uh, salar deposit which is a continental deposit in Bolivia within six years you can see the the development is very rapid because of the the uh, the exploitation of the brine and so how they do basically they drill a shallow water shallow well and then they so they pump the brine out of the surface and then they put they they flow it into the pond to make and with the solar with the sun the the water is evaporated and then lift the salt so that's the salt that is uh, containing lithium. So it's basically, this one is la uh, a lot cheaper compared with the mining operation, but the time is very uh, extensive because it needs time like almost two years, one and a half years to get the end product. And this one is geothermal brand, it's basically so basically the brine in the geothermal water contain lithium as high as 400 ppm. The one that I talked uh, talk about before, which is continental, is the content of the lithium is up to 1500 uh, ppm. So the one that is, has been producing is in Southern Sea in California, and they have uh, they have developed uh, extraction method that can produce the lithium uh, with the recovery rate really high. So this is uh, basically that that can be applied, that can be uh, developed in Indonesia because Indonesia is very rich with the geothermal fields, right? And this is basically just the detail about the extraction method of the lithium that they call it direct lithium extraction. So the technique is basically just very simple using the membrane selection method. Uh, and then they try to separate the, lithi uh, the lithium carbonate from the brine, geothermal brine, which is mainly contained of natural um, sodium chloride. But the lithium is basically present as a 
as a metal, but then you need to, they need to separate them to, to produce the lithium carbonate. And this is another type of brine in oil. So we have two, uh, three different type, oil and then geothermal and also the continental brine. But Indonesia, so far they don't have a resource for the continental brine, only geothermal and oil. So I will discuss more about that one before. And this is the one that I want to uh, tell the details about how Canada has um, produced the lithium from the oil brine. So basically there are some, uh, like they call it abandoned wells in some oil fields. So they have started the what the lithium concentration in the air formation, the water, the formation water in the in the field, and then they found the lithium is the lithium content is 60 ppm. But with this technology, they call it direct lithium extraction. They can produce the lithium up to 5,000 5, ppm. So. The, the key here is basically the extraction technology. So probably NBRI can also do the initiative work project for to make, to develop a technology for the extraction, especially for Indonesia, because Indonesia very rich with the geothermal fields and also the oil. So that's basically the one that I could suggest, I could recommend for the next work that can be done uh, by NBRI. And this is just a lithium resource in Indonesia, I mentioned before. So we have, this is the, the data that I got from the, uh, the Natural Resource Agency, the SDM. And so basically they're targeting to do the detail exploration on the Sumatra Island because they are very rich with the granite. Granite is type of the pegmatic rocks that have a uh, indication of the lithium contain, uh, content in the, in, the, in the rock. And this one I mentioned before about geothermal resource in Indonesia because Indonesia is very rich almost producing about two, giga, tiga, two gigawatt electricity from the 11 geothermal fields. So th this is very, very good. I mean, it's very um, exciting, encouraging because the material is there basically in the brine, the lithium is there, but we just need to extract it with the robust technology, but that's the one that uh, need to be developed. So like, for example, in Dieng, from three wells, it, they have measured that the lithium content can be produced up to 360 tons per year. So they have calculated. And also the oil brine is also really uh, rich with the lithium. Uh, no, I, I, I will not say that, but Indonesia rich in oil, in oil field, so the only thing that they need to do is just to collect the information from the water, water analysis information. And from there, we can start doing the study investigation, whether it is, um, can be economical or not to produce lithium. So this one is just showing you the distribution at the top. And this is uh, this is the key takeaways that I can give to. Uh, I was I prepared this for the for the MGEI convention uh, recently that I did. I spoke over there. So this is basically the recommendation that that that, that they can do in order to so that Indonesia can are ready to 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 have the rope raw material for the lithium. So it's not only preparing the manufacture, but it's going to be good if the raw material is also coming from Indonesia, right? So yeah, so that's, those are the things, the details about the work step-by-step step, uh, that can be done for, for them.
So I think that's all I have. Hello? Thank you so much, Mrs. Celia, for such an amazing presentation. We got lots of things that we never know before. So now it's time for Q&A. So for the participants who has a questions, you will be pleased to answer Mrs. Celia. Is there anyone who wants to ask a questions? Can I, can I have, uh, yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please, Prabhu. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, I would like to thank this wonderful and then uh, lectures. Uh, I never seen the lecture really uh, discussed in focus about the lithium. So this is the first time. Even I've been working with the batteries, mostly people. Uh, discuss about the cathode material, yes, the uh, the anode, and then uh, what is the about the uh, assembly, etc. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the lithium part, uh, well, is very been discussed. Yeah. So you come in really in uh, in the right time. Yeah. You know, uh, our minister sometimes said that. Uh, well, we don't know whether Indonesia have the lithium, but since the lithium only a few percent in the battery, maybe we should not worry about that. We can we can import from uh, from Australia, for example, like that. Yes, but based on your uh, lectures, that is the. Yeah. I think I think this is a, a well. I, I really uh, well uh, welcome that is you you mentioned that uh, at where I could be the uh, have the initial work. Uh, to develop the technology for extract the geothermal field, or maybe we we sit together, we make the like a team uh, discussing that about the uh, possibility of Indonesia to uh, to produce the lithium by itself. I think I think this is this is part that uh, I I can see from from what we, we discussed today. Yes, maybe uh, that, but the first uh, yeah of course the uh, SNBRI is a platform. Yes. Uh, we will uh, invite uh, several uh, from the community and then uh, that's uh, interest uh, with this work. And then we may ask you as the expert panel in Ember Eye. Yes, of course you are the expert. Okay, Maybe we, you can, you can uh, lead us, uh, like you mentioned, uh, there is oil brine and then uh, how to extract robust technology and then what we need to develop because uh, without without the basic uh, experience, without the experience, yeah, uh, I think we cannot uh, we cannot start, yeah. So maybe you can give us a suggestion about this, uh, 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 Mr. Yuli, Mrs. Yulini, please. Yeah. How, how do we start? Okay, that is. The, uh, okay. How do we start? Mm. Yes. Yeah, definitely we can. First thing we need to, that I have in mind, especially because first we have all the three source, the mining, which is mineral deposits, we do have. I think uh, the SDM or the Minerva, Minerva uh, yeah. agency, they have already have their own uh, initiative work because last in October, early October, I had discussion with them. So I I presented my my slides, and then it is in there is it there in the agreement basically what I have shown to them. That's why I borrowed their map to show you the map of that Sumatra. So that's basically we have basically three sources mm -hmm. from the hard rock, which is the the igneous rock in Sumatra and then we have also a source of brine the the water yeah the water can be divided into two sources which is geothermal brine and also oil brine so there the the, the water are there right it's just a matter of getting collecting the the chem chemistry data we do, they do have the chemistry data in geothermal fields because that's part of the routine work they have to do 
to measure the chemistry of the water in each well. So we, we have that data available. So there is no issue with that. It's just a matter of C, check the lithium. I'm, because the one that I showed you before, the, the map of Dieng, Dieng is the highest one so far we have now. And they have already, they did the calculation. So they estimated 36 ton lithium per year. That one is only from three wells. So if they have like 10 wells, you can imagine that it's just multiplied by 10, you can have more. So, and they want the, lit, the lithium extracted from the geothermal brand is very, it's way, way cheaper than in mining because the only thing that needed is the extraction uh, technology. And there are so many literature research about the extraction technology in geothermal. I can find it many literatures for that. You can just need to choose to choose to pick which one, which technology is needed is uh, giving the economical result of the recovery. So the next step after that, just do the pilot project testing. Yeah. Wow, okay. And, uh, yeah, I can send you the details about it. Uh, I, I will send you the, the PowerPoint of this because this is uh, basically, I have also included the recommendation at the end, right? right. Yeah. My, my, my question, uh, so you mentioned that there's uh, any water or salt water or what? Uh, oh, or water. So, huh? No, yeah. it is not groundwater. Not, this is specific brine water. So it's very high concentration with the salt, with the sodium, lithium. That's why it's only specific oil brine uh -huh. and geothermal brine. Okay, so you mentioned because in the end, it is like a, a lot of sulfur or in, in the end, yeah, you mentioned, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, said, right? it's the geothermal. Geothermal. geothermal, yes, because the, the source of yeah. geothermal. Not the, not the volcanic Dieng because they are very rich in sulfur. So this yeah. is the one that is with the wells, with uh, the, the field that generate, generate the electricity. Ah, okay. The, yeah, or one example, Gunung Salak, and for in Sumatra is Sarula, or in, yeah, we have many, right? In Indonesia, that's, they're very rich. So Indonesia is very rich. I think you don't, you can talk to that minister, the minister that actually we do have. It's okay. just a matter of developing their technology, yeah. Right. So we do have that, and we should start. Yes. So don't 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 neglect don't neglect it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. It is the the resource is there. We have potential. It's just a matter of uh, finding the technology to extract. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, how many uh, percent? It is uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that we have this thirty six ton per year. So it means that. Uh, so that's big quantity, yes. But it is the, yeah. the extract, the extraction after the extraction, or still the you know the the brine and um, oil brine. No, uh, it is big. It, uh, I think it is really big because that one is only master tested from three wells, mm -hmm. right? Because in in geothermal in geothermal fields, they have tens of wells. Like, let's say this one is it, really needed like a collaborative work between the company and then also the institution and then also the, the government. But the only thing, one of the recommendation that I uh, mentioned is about the legal, legal framework because I think the regulation saying for the geothermal brine the operator company has the right to extract the mineral too, not only the steam. Uh, that's that's the thing that needs to be checked. Uh, but in oil and oil and gas, 
all the water or the minerals is belong to the country, the, the government. So not belong to the operator company. So that's that's the a uh, part of the legal work that need to be reviewed first. Who is who has the right to extract? Okay. So that that that's yeah. the purpose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm I'm not very familiar with the regulation for the resource. Uh, natural resource in Indonesia, that's, but that's what I heard from some of the um, geologists that I discussed before, we discussed with before, so that's what they mentioned. The difference between geothermal and oil and gas. So ge oil and gas, the operator company do not have right to again the, to extract the lithium the lithium or the minerals in the water of the formation. But for geothermal, the operator company has the right to, to uh, produce that. But to, to make sure to guarantee 100% which one is correct, I think, Professor Effie, you can, you can check the regulation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's uh, very interesting because <coughs> Yeah, we want to, uh, as the NBRI platform, uh, it is also important to give the, the information, the right from the uh, well, original uh, resources, yeah, like, like you are uh, yeah. original source. Yeah? So, uh, yeah. so I hope you don't mind uh, later on we, we discuss and maybe we can make like a summary uh, in, in, in our website, yes, that just brief and then uh, for uh, the, the, the later on. But for, uh, for time... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this, uh, and you will be invited as the one of the our uh, uh, expert panel in NBRI. Yes, that uh, for special in the lithium. Yeah, that's. Uh, oh. yeah. Okay, Sita <laughs> will do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, we should put okay. you first. Yeah, and then okay, uh, maybe uh, Sinta can Is you. There any other question? Pardon? Is there any other question from yeah, other yes. participants? Yeah. There is Professor uh, from Alexi from Australia. Alexi, are you there? Yes. yes uh, good Maybe morning. you can give some. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just uh, want to make one comment uh, to, to the talk, which may be of interest to everybody. Um, so cobalt was mentioned as an important metal for batteries, and this is definitely true at the moment. Uh, however, there is a um, current research that is trying to. Uh, create uh, cathode materials with uh, similar performance to NMC, but without cobalt in them. And uh, I think, uh, as far as I know, this is a reasonably successful direction at the moment. So it, it may be possible that in the future, cobalt perhaps will be a bit uh, less important for, for batteries. The, the, the right, time. yeah, I agree with you. Because, you know what, um, because of the situation of the world demanding the cobalt, but Actually, the country that producing the cobalt has issue with the political issue, corruption. That's why the the research, researchers actually becoming um, encouraged to find other way to replace their cobalt. Because even I heard about trying to find uh, to replace the lithium with the magnesium. So magnesium battery, that's what I heard. So there is like a, the, the battery technology uh, research is very rapid uh, develop. It's, a, it's been rapid development because of the, the demand on the electrical vehicle. So the energy storage development, especially for the technology is very expensive. It's very rapid, progressing, right? So yeah, I will not be surprised if lithium ion battery will not be demanding anymore because there will be other technology that is gonna be invented to replace that because of the situation of the countries who producing that is, is not very stable in terms of the, uh, the labor issue and also even to the environment because actually 
this is for the green technology, right? But how green technology, but actually on the other hand, there is some part that is not really green. Do you agree with that? In terms of the yeah, producing? Sure, sure. So I think there are several possible, I guess, more sustainable technologies that might complement yeah, right. some batteries. It's, it's yes, yes. But actually, when I, when I speak about cobalt, I mean lithium ion batteries themselves, because uh, there is some research that I sort of know that shows that you can, it's, it might be possible to remove uh, cobalt from the cathode and it still works with a similar performance to uh, cobalt containing cathode. Right, yeah. yeah. But, so, but uh, your, your point is also very true. So there are uh, batteries in development based on sodium uh, and some, some other elements, which might be yeah. also commercial in the future. Hmm? Right, yeah, thank you. Is there any other question from the, from the audience? Thank you, Alexis. Yeah. So maybe Mrs. Sulini may I ask a question? So you are living in Canada and you are studying mostly in abroad and all of us, mostly here, our participants is mostly as students. So we would like yeah. to know how to live in Canada and how to study there, how it looks like. May you share your yeah. experience for that? Thank you. Okay, I do have uh, some of the slide that I can give, I can share with you. Let me just. Okay, let me just. Okay, let me just open the. PowerPoint. I just open it. Okay, hold on a second. Okay. Mm. okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, so yeah, study in Canada with scholarship. This is, um, I assume the student that are looking for the scholarship in Canada is mainly for the postgraduate, correct? Yes, correct. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, because Canada actually offered a lot of scholarship uh, to study only for the postgraduate. Because for undergraduate, you need to get admission first, and then as an international student, and then after that, um, you can apply many as many as possible scholarship but once you become an international student, if it is undergraduate. But for postgraduate, which is master and uh, doctorate, you can definitely apply. This is the way I'm gonna tell you how to do it. So basically the key point, there is no G2G scholarship in Canada. Only, what I know is only in New Zealand. They, are, they have a G2G scholarship through NZ or, um, NZODA. So it's basically, it's like, a a fair trade relationship between New Zealand government and Indonesian government. That's that's what I got uh, for, uh, for my study in University of uh, Auckland in New Zealand. But for Canada, there is no G to G universe uh, scholarship, and there is one uh, program from Indonesian agency which is LPD, LPDP. So you can try that one. And as I mentioned before, the the, the scholarship for the postgraduate is full funding, research base. So how you do it, you need to contact directly to the prospective professor or supervisor at the university that you want to, you want to approach. That's the only way. So it's, it's basically you need to have a communication by email or yeah, mainly by email approach and then there are some trick here, tips. So you need to attach your CV 
And then if possible, if you have some technical uh, publication or paper or journal in the international journal, that will be even better because that's, that will be um, attraction for the, for the supervisor or professor to pick you because the competition is very, very high because so many uh, countries or students from around the world to try to apply to university in Canada because Canada university are, are among the best. I would say they are among the best. Uh, and then also prepare your ILT and then have the recommendation ready, especially from the supervisor from your uh, undergrad uh, study. And then the last one, I have collected some information about, especially for the energy storage study, lithium study. I noticed there are several universities that have specific uh, research specifically for the lithium or the energy storage, then you can, I will share this, this PowerPoint to all of you so you can have a look. Uh, and basically, this is this will be interesting because the lithium is really, the research is really demanding now, especially for, the, for Canada. And if you can get the opportunity from this study that would be that would be great because it's going to be a very good credit for you because lithium or energy storage is it will be demanding until next 10 or 15 years and so yeah that's that's the information i could give if you have any other question about uh, cost living i can definitely answer if you have but this is basically the tips that you can do uh, to get the opportunity for the scholarship in Canada because the AFL is, is very, um, is very, I mean, the, the scholarship are, are a lot. They offer a lot, a lot of uh, scholarship for, from Canada. I think that's all for, for this session. Uh, for the scholarship session, Asinta. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. I think we are really glad to know that. And now for most of the students, which is focusing on energy storage, you can see all the presentations. Later on, we will send the link, or you can see on our website uh, about these information. So thank you so much, Mr. Sidney, for the answering. And now I give the time to Professor Abby to summarize this uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, first, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, to Mrs. Yulini uh, Aridiningsi uh, from Calgary for your uh, great lecture. Uh, I hope uh, that you can uh, well uh, uh, deliver again the lecture for in, in another occasion. And then we would like to, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this uh, lecture is very, very important for all of us. Yes, uh, I'm sure that uh, even for me, uh, I never had before uh, the detailed information about the lithium, the resources, and how to uh, extract that mineral, uh, and then where it's, uh, there is in Indonesia and in other countries. So this is a great lecture. Uh, we don't talk about the lithium ion battery if you don't know about the lithium. So you are right, yes? You are exactly the right person to talk first, yeah, before talking about the lithium. I'm sometimes talking more about the material cathode than the lithium because I have no much information and experience. So uh, I think uh, with, your, uh, with your coming uh, with us, uh, it means that it make uh, our team and their uh, team uh, the panel is more uh, you know uh, complete. Yes, uh, we are coming from. Uh, so this is the one uh, I see. And then uh, the other is your uh, your experience. Uh, you have a great really experience. Your background education. So so you you not only tell us but you you the the point. Yes, you understand uh, how. To, to work with that, yes. I think the government of Indonesia, not only MBRI, it you, yes, uh, as the our advisor, yes. Uh, I may have to introduce you also to our Minister of Research and Technology. Yeah? 
next time maybe we make uh, our own session with, with, with him. Yes, I think it's, you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I would like to uh, summarize that uh, this is an important lecture, and then I hope that uh, all the participants can uh, you know uh, enjoy the lectures and then uh, also uh, have the experience and know want to know more, but not only uh, just learning, but maybe we should uh, do to start uh, uh, I mean the team. Uh, working on this uh, lithium, and then uh, thank you also for sharing about the the study in Canada. So it's my great pleasure. I you saw McMaster because I graduated also. Well, I was a visiting PhD student in Canada in 1995, yeah. and then uh, I was doing my postdoctoral in uh, McMaster also uh, in 98 to 2000 and. My daughter was born in Canada, so I have a public Canadian there. <laughs> yes, I hope, uh, I hope someday uh, we can uh, directly meeting uh, officially. Uh, sure. Okay, once again, uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Yelini, uh, for this uh, great time. Yes, uh, and uh, yes, that's the, the of, uh, our uh, our uh, what is the our panel? Thank you again. Thank you. Yeah, I'll send my email if, in case you have anyone have question. I can definitely just feel free to send me email for question. I can help with answer. Yeah, I, I hope that. Thank you, you yeah. Thank you, Professor Ivy, for the time for the opportunity. So yeah, yes, right. Uh, one thing. Uh, I hope you don't mind. You make the you give us the some uh, brief summary. To, for us to upload the, in, in our website about the lithium. Yes, we have part of sure. it. Yeah, but that's it. Uh, so. Yeah. So many, I, we ask you, but uh, I know it's, uh, yeah, you're very, very welcome, uh, Mrs. Celine. You are still yeah. Indonesian, are you? <laughs> Do you want a photo session, Sinta? Before yeah, we. Yeah, we will do a photo session. So. Thank you so much, Prof. Ivy, and thank you so much, Mrs. Sirini. So now, to all the participants, we will be ask you to open your camera because we will do a photo sessions together. So for all participants, please turn on your video. Okay. Kartika, Bambang, Rizky, Tipta, Rizka, Andika, Asuhan, Rida. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Rida. Okay, everyone's ready. And three, two, one. Cheers. One more. In three, two, one. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. And. This Thank is you. at the end of our event. So, Prof. Evie, do you have any closing statement? Well, uh, thank you again uh, for the speaker, for the lectures, and uh, thank you for Alexi uh, also uh, for the comment. Yes. Uh, so, we will have the, the next also lecture from Alexi, maybe next week. Yes. Uh, about the Australia, about the what the research, uh, the lithium battery research in, in Australia, yes, and how study there. So uh, we will always uh, try to uh, to gather all information from all over the world. That is the NBR I was for is to share the knowledge from the really the the real the real uh, well the real expert. Yes, uh, okay. Uh, so we we'll wait until the, the next uh, session from uh, from Ember uh, I. We have also millennial and uh, lecture on FGD, etc. Uh, uh, please welcome to become the member also of Ember I. Yes, uh, as a foundation also we will need a support from all of you. Yeah, so I make this a uh, foundation to bring up uh, all the uh, young scientists, especially to become uh, 
a great uh, expert in battery uh, that can run uh, Indonesia in the future. Yes, the, I think, and also for all of our uh, uh, other uh, scientists all over the world. We are together, no, no barrier. Once again, on behalf of the National Battery Research Institute, uh, would like to thank to uh, Mrs. Yulini, uh, Alexi, Sinta, and other participants for coming uh, today on your holiday time, weekend time. But uh, uh, well, it's a great. Yes, we have uh, you all up here. Here, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Ivy. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Alexi. Thank you, all the participants. Now, our event is officially closed. So, thank you, everyone, and see you on another event. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Yeah. Maybe I talk with Ms. Yulini. Okay. Yeah. So you, you can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You well, yeah, the, the other guest. Okay, thank you, everybody. Yes, have a nice weekend. Ada Bu Kartika. Yeah, yeah. Nanti bicara ya. Pak Subhan tuh mestinya ada itu mention tuh kan orang apa Lipi. Ya Ibu nanti apa kita bicara apa Bu Yuli ini? Uh, Mungkin ide yang tadi untuk kita bikin apa tim FGD ya, mungkin kita bikin FGD khusus yang dengan tim yang membahas tadi apa, kira-kira apa aja yang bisa kita lakukan untuk apa lithium. Kira-kira apa, uh, kita harus kumpulkan uh, yang apa, yang uh, berminat untuk uh, riset. Saya nggak tahu apakah tadi apa, uh, perlu riset dulu atau langsung yang besar apa dengan SDM atau bagaimana tadi itu mungkin kita, uh, we have to. to, to iya. Yeah. Ya. Uh, itu jalur jalur uh, prosesnya gimana bu? Kalau misalnya karena kebetulan ada kelompok kecil dari alumni saya sedang memikirkan 